Stan Jibalisco here, once again, with part three in the grand finale, grand finale, of our diodes in parallel experiment. What I have here is just what I had when we left off from part one. A semiconductor diode here, a silicon diode, three silicon diodes in parallel here one silicon diode here. The cathodes are all on the left, the anodes are all on the right, the negative terminal of a 6.3 roughly volt battery comprising those four cells. The negative terminal goes there to the cathode of that left hand diode. The electrons then flow through the diodes through a jumper through one of three resistors that I can select here and then back to the positive terminal of the battery. Well, gotta always remember to disconnect that jumper before I mess around with the, uh, before I leave this circuit unattended or I'm gonna drain my battery and with the meter you gotta turn them off when you're done using them. That's easy to forget that kind of stuff, but uh, you forget it a few times and you'll get your reward and then maybe you'll remember in the future. Once again, well, we've got 578 millivolts across there, 518 across there. I guess our battery has gotten a little more robust since yesterday, 576 across there, 3300 ohm resistor. Now, what I'm theorizing, now note that this voltage drop is lower than these. The reason is that these three diodes in parallel are sharing the current and when you have less current through one of these in the forward direction, the voltage drop goes down a little bit. I already determined that by experiment. So let's look at this one more time. 518, 519 millivolts. Now let's move this jumper over to the 10K resistor. That's about three times the 3300 ohms that we had before so the current should go down by a factor of three so we should see less than 517 millivolts here and indeed we do we see only 473 millivolts here now I'm predicting that we're gonna see about 517 millivolts there and 517 millivolts there roughly because the current through each of these diodes now will be one-third what it was, which would be the same as the current through any one of these diodes before. So let's find out. Now this is scientific method in action. You observe something weird, that's part one of this video sequence. You concoct a theory to explain what you have seen. That was part two. And here in part three, you conduct another experiment or multiple experiments to verify whether or not, you, or to check to see whether or not your theory works under different conditions. If it does, maybe it's a decent theory. If it doesn't, you know that there's something wrong with that theory. 528 millivolts. 526 millivolts. Let's move that back and measure this one again right now. 518, 519 if we round it off. So that is pretty close but it's not exact. Of course these resistances are pretty close but not exact and in order to do that, in order to ascertain that, excuse my hand, that's mega ohms. Let's uh, move it to kilo ohms and see what we get. This resistor here, we got to take our jumpers off now before we measure any resistances. We don't want to measure resistance with current going through the resistor to begin with, or we'll get a bogus reading. 324, 320, yeah, 320, or th three. 3,243 ohms, 3.243 kilo ohms. And this one, this one over here on the right. Well, now, I don't know, what's, what's up with that? 
Let's try a different range. I'm still uh, learning how to use this, resist uh, this resistance measurement device. 9.86 uh, kilo ohms. So that's pretty close to 3 times 325. 3 times 325 would be 975. So 985 is pretty close. So it's pretty doggone close. So my theory predicts pretty well what would happen but it isn't exact and there's two possible reasons for that one of them is that my theory is a little bit off and the other one is now, now how can a theory be a little bit off you might ask well in the real world of uh, physics it's a little different than the um, imaginary world of mathematics in mathematics everything is perfect and that is why people like G. H. Hardy the famed mathematician loved mathematics so much pure mathematics I'm reading a book right now about uh, Grisha Perlman I don't know exactly how that name is pronounced but he was a Russian mathematician who proved um, or he proved in Russia anyway that uh, the Poincare conjecture about uh, three-dimensional objects but anyway that is pure mathematics perfection in the real world here with physics things are never quite perfect there's always experimental error and there could be some other factor involved in this situation that I am neglecting to consider some little fudge factor that would explain the slight difference between what I predicted and what I actually got but I was pretty close with my prediction to what actually happened so I'll leave it up to you. Will you buy what I've been talking about here? Or do you think I'm just full of baloney? Stan Chibalisco from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Until next time, turn that meter off and so long.